Victoria, and they've joined forces at a rehearsal because they're preparing for a big concert that will be right here on Friday night. Now, when you think of school, you think reading, writing, do you ever think of uh, stick handling, scoring goals, little ice time? Well, there's a hockey academy in Port Alberni that is creating not only great students, but great players. Nancy Wilmot with that story. As long as there have been schools, there have been students who've had a hard time getting to their classes on time in the morning. But consider this group of students from Alberni District Secondary School in Port Alberni, a group that shows up early to take their lessons not from a blackboard, but on the ice. I just think back to my own days playing as a kid, I never had this chance. Uh, other places wish they had the ability to run a program like this, and with our high school right across the road, it makes it much easier to make this a reality. Carl Poole's enthusiasm is justified. After a decade of operation, the Alberni District Hockey Academy has become a model of sports education and is attracting students from outside of the Alberni Valley who choose to enroll in local schools just to attend. Well, there's been a number of people in the past that have come to Port Alberni, um, Duncan, Paul River. Um, being a counselor in the school, there definitely have been parents that have registered for the sole reason that we have a hockey academy. And although gearing up and hitting the ice early may take a fair bit of discipline, the opportunity to train on specific skills has proven to be a benefit to both recreational and serious competitive players. It's all about individual skill development. And as a coach, you're watching to see what might be missing from an athlete, from a player. So if that player uh, is shooting the puck um, but has a decent technique, we might just talk about quickness. We might just talk about getting rid of the shot in a hurry. I've been doing it for three years and I love it. And it's great practice to work on skills that you don't get to like with your hockey team. They make it so anyone can do it. It doesn't matter how good what level you play at. <laughs> it's not their minor hockey team. I don't have to be their coach that has to discipline them for something right or wrong. But the best part for me really is to, uh, because I really do truly enjoy being here, I think is to bring a positive energy. All of which has made this Hockey Canada Skills Academy both popular and successful. But it's also a program that has proven valuable to middle and secondary schools in the Alberni Valley. One of the philosophies of education is it takes a community to raise a child. And this just it definitely fits with that program. It's also obviously a, a fun opportunity for them. Many kids uh, you know, uh, are, are, are excited about the fact that they can come to school. They're not in a classroom. Uh, they can leave kind of the surroundings of the school environment where there's textbooks and calculators and be able to come to the rink and just do something that they love. I think it's a great choice to make. It's like fun and I feel like Playing hockey at school helps get your brain going for like academic courses and stuff. Information about the Alberni District Hockey Canada Skills Academy can be found online or for Alberni Valley students through your school's office. Registration is open to students from grade 6 to 12. In Port Alberni, I'm Nancy Wilmot. Thanks for that story, Nancy. Oh, I could just listen to this music all day. Oh my gosh, the Nathan Band, University of Victoria Orchestra, joining forces, beautiful. We have to take a very short break, but please stay with us. When we come back, more music and a really cool story about how intern tradespeople are helping keep our Navy afloat. I'll let Paul Ballstein explain. Another day. Four years just went just like that. Another day closer to the end. I want this to continue on for a couple more years. I've had a lot of fun. A day closer to new beginnings. This is Esquimalt's fleet maintenance facility, Cape Breton. Our motto on our crest is we serve the fleet. 
At FMF, it's business as usual, ships. Over 750 highly trained civilian employees and 35 military staff provide engineering and production support here at the Department of National Defense Dockyard. FMF also employs over 100 apprentices. At the moment, 46 are working towards trade certification in careers like electronics, metal fabrication, electroplating, and welding. After four years, Victoria's Kelsey Cole is ready to write his final exam to become a certified painter decorator. Right now I'm learning industrial coatings, marine coatings, um, and anything and everything to do with the paint trade. Heidi Scholes is in the same boat. She's working to become a certified joiner. It's something that I wanted to pursue to see possibly a career or not, I, I didn't know. I, mean, I thought apprenticeship was the perfect way to figure that out once and for all. Love the program in. Apprenticeship is learning by doing. The older guys in the shop aren't going to be here forever. They take a lot of knowledge with them, so we need to kind of get as much out from them as we can before they leave. They work full time. They get paid. Generally around 50% of a journey person's wages. But every six months you're making an extra money, you're making a raise, you're making a raise. And they go to school for four to six weeks a year. I'm learning something new every day. Apprenticeship program manager John Smith says it's a win-win. The baby boomers are retiring off in great numbers and we need some skilled people that are new to the trade that can carry on in these positions for the next 30 years. They come from across Canada. Most are fresh from high school or people looking for a new career. They work with a journey person and develop their skills, work ethic, and by the end become a fully indentured journey person. Knowing that good work and high marks will be rewarded. Chances are that uh, they will be keeping us around. Um, I mean, you don't know for sure until you have the piece of paper in front of you, but... Hopefully I'll be extended here and I can continue my career here. Apprenticing is the beginning with a job at the end, but that's not the only bonus. You get paid by your employer throughout the year while you're getting your hands and experience and building those hours towards your ticket. If you go to the university, you have to put in the time before you get the, the cash, so to speak. Uh, with this program, you're, you're paid right away. D&D helps pay for schooling as well, so apprentices can actually begin working full-time, debt-free. We have to do the hard work and make sure we keep our marks up and whatnot, but definitely they're, they're there to lend us a hand. And once they get certified, John says, most apprentices want to stay with the D&D rather than work in the private sector jobs across the bay. Over the last 10 years, 98% have stayed here at FMF. John says it's job security that helps keep them here, even if wages are slightly lower. They always have work to do. We can gainfully employ apprentices and journey people 12 months a year. Outside industry works project to project, so possibly when that project leaves, their employment leaves. When you average that out, we're farther ahead. But John says it's more than just the money. People love working here. You know, it would be sad to have to leave. For us, it's more than an apprenticeship, it's a family. We see young people come in here, start their apprenticeship, become married, they've bought a house, they have a family. It, it's a great feeling to be part of that. And after four years, these apprentices will have a new beginning. You know, I feel a lot more positive on my outlook of, of life than I did when I started, not knowing really where I was going, at least now. I have a direction and I have uh, something behind my name. In a Squimalt, I'm Paul Beilstein. So this is where it will be happening, right here at the Farquhar Auditorium at the University of Victoria. Get your tickets. Friday night, 8 o'clock it starts. It's going to be one of those concerts that will absolutely fill your soul with the love of music. From the University of Victoria for Go Island, I'm Karen Algersma. See you next time. Go Island is brought to you by German Auto Import Network. Women's clothing provided by Tulip Noir. Casual designer fashions. Men's wardrobe by DG Bremner & Co. Menswear and accessories. Hair services provided by Salon J.